Coming at you from Los Angeles, this is Mobility Revolution, powered by Hire Car. We're going to take you on a journey through the unique business models and income opportunities that Mobility as a Service has to offer. From selling cars to sharing scooters, you'll learn how you fit in to the Mobility Revolution. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mobility Revolution, powered by Hire Car. My name is Nate. I'm Reese, and we're your hosts. And today we have two special guests today. Um, Our first guest, Jeff Hodge, he's a native to the U.S. Virgin Islands, is an entertainment industry veteran. He has performed stand-up comedy across the world, from America's hottest clubs to a USO comedy tour of the Middle East, where he entertained thousands of troops from all branches of the United States military. And he's even open for legends like David Sanborn, George Lopez, and Arsenio Hall. Jeff, it's great to have you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming on. (laughs) And uh, our other guest, Rudy Salo. Rudy is an infrastructure finance attorney at a large international law firm, public speaker, writer, and change maker enthusiast. As an attorney, Rudy advises lenders, investment banks, educational institutions, and governmental entities on financing and structuring public and private projects through the United States. Well-versed in both the financial and policy spheres of the transportation industry, Rudy passionately advocates for critical rethinking of our infrastructure to accommodate the advanced transportation technology currently available to make our daily commutes more tolerable, safer, and productive. Rudy, it's awesome to have you. Thanks yeah. for joining us. No, I'm proud to be here, and I'm sure your listeners are probably going, what the hell is going on with yeah. this show? <laughs> uh, the, the reason why I can proudly say that I'm a good public speaker and even put that in my bio is one of the reasons because of the man to my left over here i i can't i can't write this in here yet but i but i have done some stand-up comedy because my teacher here has trained me to do so so i have done that so i promise even though what you read may sound boring to some people i promise i am not boring (laughs) yeah i mean we just recently had lunch and just talking to you you're really kind of quite the renaissance man Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Rudy, yeah. I am. Rudy, 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 Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> hey, you just gave away my opening. You just gave away my stand up opening, man. You're killing me. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, it's great to have you guys on today. Um, so let's get straight into it. Jeff, yes, sir. alongside being a great comic, uh, you also do ride sharing yeah. as an Uber and Lyft driver. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it on the down low. Um, what kind of got you into that? What? What interests you in ride sharing? You know, the flexibility. A female friend of mine was driving for Lyft, and I had never heard of Lyft. I heard of, heard of Uber, and Uber had told me I applied for Uber, and they were like, my car was too old. And then I was talking to this friend, and she asked what she did the weekend. She said she got a, she was driving around picking up people. And I'm like, what are you doing? That's dangerous. She told me about Lyft. And I signed up, and I like the flexibility, man. You know, I do it when I want to. Like last night, I went to an event. And then when I was done, I just turned on my app and I picked up a couple people. Perfect. So for you, it's more of a, a, a side hustle or a side right. gig, not the full-time driver. I mean, I'll, you know, it depends. Some days I'll drive all day, you know, like on the weekends if I ain't doing nothing. You mm-hmm. know, I'll drive all day, you know. Weekends tend to be uh, uh, busy. I'll drive more or less at night now in, you know, LAX. That's where my spot is. Do you do it to keep yourself out of trouble, Jeff? Is that another? Is that another hey, my mom that, says, so long as you are working, you cannot get in trouble. It's true. Exactly. It's true. Depend upon the kind of work that you're doing, though. You know, some, you know, some people think crime is a is working. <laughs> How long have you been uh, driving? You know what? It's somewhere between four and five years. I don't, right. I don't remember when. I don't know, but it's been a while. There's had to have been like crazy changes over the years as opposed you know now driving for uber or lyft as opposed to maybe three or four years ago when you first started what are you know some of the bigger changes that you've experienced as a driver one of the biggest thing is it seems like everybody's doing it now yeah uh my neighbor called an uber the other day and lapd gave him a ride so that's how that <laughs> is. Uh, no it's it seems like a like a couple years ago you can make more doing less mm-hmm. and you know like when it would surge it would surge a lot longer because it was less people now like i say it seemed like everybody if you try to look at every car that just passes you or whatever got an uber lift sticker don't mean that they're still doing it but they did it at one point yep so with that now you have to be more strategic because in the past you could just turn on your app you get right now 
I remember times uh, recently, I've turned on my app and like West Hollywood searches a lot at night uh, and it was like three point something. And I sat there and I didn't get any rides. I'm like, what, did they shut me off? And I reported, I called it and said, no, it's just it's saturated with drivers. So it just takes longer yep. to get a ride. So th that's one of the big things. Uh, the money, the, the money has gone down, you know, because uh, I guess they got more drivers. So what we make per ride is less, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to like, Three years ago, I mean, you know, I could do a couple of rides and, you know, you could go to the strip club, make it rain. <laughs> well, you got to kind of, you know, do it like longer. Now, now you can make it sprinkle. Is yeah. that, is yeah. that Pretty much. Yeah. A little bit of, that, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. These are all ones. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, there's a, there's a hot topic right now of Uber and Lyft drivers wanting to actually become employees of Uber and Lyft. Um, with this saturation, as somebody who's been driving for a while, how do you, especially Rudy, you probably have some great input on this as well. How do you see that affecting yourself as a driver and Uber and Lyft as a company? Well, personally, I don't, I don't, well, Uber and Lyft been fighting it, you know, and some of the drivers, the drivers that I had talk about it, I want to do it full time, you know, um, me personally, this is what I think. Them guys are making a lot of money now, and well, they're worth a lot of money now. And um, I think sometimes they forget who's driving their car, where the engine is driving their car. So I think what they need to do is share a little bit more of that wealth with the drivers, because if the drivers don't do it, they don't have a company. You know, as far as being an employee, it depends on what comes with it. I'm biggest thing with me flexibility. Mm -hmm. if I, I'll be an employee. I'll take the benefits and all that. But you know, if if it means that I can't. I have to work certain hours and whatnot. Exactly. That means, well, I have to break up my old list of excuses to get out of work. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's 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 interesting because one one of the things that Jeff and I kind of bonded over when he was when <clears throat> he was my stand up comedy coach last summer was he's like, hey, I got a, I got a whole bunch of these class action suits laying around here, and and uh, you know, can you take a look at these and figure out what's going on here and. I was not his attorney. As a friend, I took a look at the paperwork and then I did some research into mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft. And I'm like, well, here, you got to file for this. You got to do that. So over the years, Uber and Lyft has been sued many, many times. Right? Yeah. There's been a lot of class action. There's been a lot of settlements. But last April, a California Supreme Court case came down, which um, more stringently classifies independent contractors versus employees. The California Supreme Court came down with a, a very strict employment test um it's basically it's called like the abc method of determining an employee whereby the employer has to disprove that they have employees so it's, it's going to be very difficult going forward for rideshare companies to prove that their workers excuse me the people that they're contracting with are not employees mm -hmm. um and, and right now there's there's a there's a larger debate that that i have been reading about um in the legislature about you know clearing clearing up the 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 gray matter and uber and lyft are, are lobbying for one thing workers are lobbying for another and hopefully they can get to like a nice middle ground because think of the word that jeff kept saying when you asked him why do you do it the first thing that he said to flexibility right okay and as an employee i mean in the new gig economy and everything that's out there our, our lives are no longer nine to five things mm -hmm. are a lot more flexible but not as flexible as Jeff doesn't want to work, did, quote unquote, doesn't want to drive today. He just doesn't turn on his phone. Mm -hmm. Like capturing the flexibility for the drivers, yet getting some, you know, worker protections, getting some benefits. That's what there's going to be. There needs to be some middle ground, there's some, middle ground, some yep. negotiations there, which will be interesting. But I mean, they're going to need to settle this because I, I don't think uh, the sharing economy is going away. I think it's just going to continue to expand in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I think. Uh, I know I've kind of briefly heard that uh, I think it was Uber leading the charge. They're trying to create uh, essentially a new classification of 1099 workers. Correct. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out and affect, affects all this legislature that's happening Abs on this front. Absolutely. I mean, I think obviously you guys will be watching it as a part of your business model for the, for the companies that you work with. Mm -hmm. and everyone's watching it. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, quite honestly, that it happens here in California. Like these are where these companies are headquartered. This is where forward thinking happens. Yep. So I'm hoping it'll all work out and it'll work out soon and everyone will be happy. I, I, I hope this doesn't get dragged out in court cases for many, many years mm -hmm. and it becomes unsettled. And 
that that's my hope right and one of the things to me that i don't know necessarily been confusing but doesn't make sense is there's the rideshare drivers are pushing to become employees which which i get um but at the same time you have the cities and states making the rideshare drivers get business licenses which is creating i guess a greater classification that these people are independent contractors operating their own business mm-hmm. it, it's it's see there's so many things going on all at the same time and, and as a part of my like real-time day job i, I work on behalf of local governments mm-hmm. okay, I, I i help infrastructure projects get built throughout the entire country uh, revenues are, are something that local governments are always going to need okay mm-hmm. um Especially here in California, after the passage of, of um, you know, Proposition 13, and the limitation of, of property taxes back in the late 1970s, capturing um, property taxes is limited here. So local governments have, have had to become creative in getting their local revenues. Mm-hmm. So if there's a way for them to, you know, get some more license fees and get more, you know, revenue in, then then... The reality is, and they could capture that that revenue, and they can build some infrastructure. Right, that's a big part of of the transportation More vacations world. for them. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, it it's not all bad. Um, you know, the, local governments need to look at that. These Uber drivers and Lyft drivers are passing through the cities. Okay, we see them sometimes parking on the streets. We see them kind of hanging around. So they're mm-hmm. they are having an effect in the various cities. So one way to control that is to make sure that they have business licenses and they follow laws. So you got to kind of balance things out, right? Cities, cities need to be safe and, mm-hmm. they, and they need to continue to operate and they need to have revenues and they need to balance that against, you know, workers, you know, wanting to work. So it's, it's difficult. It's a, it's a hard thing to, it's a hard thing to address. Mm-hmm. They're ripping us off, man. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. You know, another really hot topic, um, which you've written a couple interesting articles about, is the future of autonomy with Uber and Lyft drivers, basically. Um, You know, it's a question for both of you. How do you see, you know, autonomy is essentially kind of on the brink of... Just want to to correct you. Do you mean autonomous vehicles? Autonomous vehicles. Gotcha. Yes. Um, We're on the brink of almost getting there. To where we're, we'll see them testing in our cities and all that, um, but I still think they're they're quite a bit of ways out for it becoming the norm. Um, but how do you guys see that affecting rideshare drivers and especially yourself um, going into the future? Well, I hope to have my TV deal by then, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I've heard some people, uh, some of the drivers, uh, talked about it. They seem concerned, and like I said. Um, I don't know. For me, I'm not worried about it because, like I said, you said it's a couple of years away, so I'm hoping to be where I want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm, I'll live in the moment. If when it comes, I'm still driving, then, you know, I'll just have to, um, I don't know, figure out something else. But well, here are my thoughts on it. Um, you can go onto Google right now. You can go search autonomous vehicles, and you can get wowed. So the autonom- autonomous vehicles are already here, okay? The rollout of autonomous vehicles really becoming a part of our – society and, and, and taking over from jobs mm. isn't quite here yet. And there's a number of reasons for that. Why? Number one, we have, um, we have this c- conflict, if you will, between the fe- federal laws regulating autonomous vehicles. And we also have every state having their own laws. So there's this disconnect between the two. Mm-hmm. There was some legislation that was put forward about a year or two ago that would have uh, made it uh, impossible for states and local governments to govern autonomous vehicles, uh, level three, level four, level five, but that, that didn't go forward. So that's not law yet. Mm -hmm. So we still have this patchwork of legislation. So that's what it's called. So every state's got their own thing going on here in Los Angeles, here in California, we're, we're starting to, to roll out more autonomous vehicles that we, we had really draconian legislation and that drove a lot of the autonomous vehicle companies to go out of California and develop in other states. Phoenix is a big hub of autonomous vehicles. They're doing a lot in Nevada. Nevada, actually very interesting. Nevada was the first state in the union to pass autonomous vehicle legislation. So they were very forward thinking. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh's got a lot of- um, Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, yeah. With Carnegie Mellon and and the other schools that are there, they're doing a lot in that city as well. Um, So autonomous vehicles, they're here. The difference is 
Well, what isn't here? What isn't here, and this is what I have written a lot about, is the infrastructure. Our infrastructure is not here yet in order for autonomous vehicles to rapidly change our life. That goes back to the revenue question. How do you build infrastructure? Well, you need government revenue and you need public-private partnerships, and there's this disconnect. At a certain point, we're going to need more private companies like Uber, like Lyft, the companies that did just IPO and have access to the capital markets Mm -hmm. to get their hands more involved in building out the infrastructure in order to build out a fully, you know, uh, you know, more autonomous connected society. My arguments have been, we start with dedicated lanes. Right. We, have, we have very specific lanes just for autonomous vehicles. Cause one of the problems that I have is if you're going to put autonomous vehicles on the road with human drivers, exactly, that's going to be a mess. Yep. Exactly. Well, now you just even imagine in Los Angeles, how does an autonomous car navigate upper grand and lower grand? It's actually impossible because um, I can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a robot, and I've lived in LA for forever, and I work here, and I still can't figure out yeah. upper and lower ground. It's yeah. unbelievable. Self-driving cars, I don't know, man. I, you know, it would have to be like I remember back when I was in college, the first ten years, when they're talking about cell phones. The first ten years, you, you guys are supposed to giggle at yeah. that. <laughs> no, it's, it is. It hey, what the first ten? It took us twenty years. I'm his laugh track. No, okay, you guys get it. that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. When they told me about get phones. <laughs> Laugh with now. <laughs> cameras, you know, with a big discussion, be like, what? I don't want on the phone with cameras because, you know, you could be in the bathroom, blah, 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 talking on the phone. And, you know, now we have it. And it's like, okay, it's not like you thought. So I could just cannot, like you say, I just can't picture, picture self driving cars in LA of all places. Even if you have a dedicated lane, you would have to put like a, in Houston, their carpool lane, they have a physical barrier. Right. You that's, can't just do a line. Oh, yeah, that's right, Jeff. I agree exactly. with you. I hundred percent agree with you. That's exactly what should happen. But it's gonna happen. Okay. As a matter of fact, the city of Los Angeles is one of the first cities in the entire world that actually have incorporated driverless cars in its in its future kind of like urban planning. Like we're one of the most forward thinking cities in the future. And with the Olympics coming in twenty twenty eight, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing perhaps a dedicated lane to or something along those lines being built. Because everyone's worried about, oh, my God, what's going to happen in 2028? Is the infrastructure going to be right. here? Are the drivers, I mean, what's going to happen? We're going to see a lot of great, cool things happening in this town for the next nine years. 2028, awesome. man. I'm worried about just 2019 getting through this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have your TV deal by then. So what uh, yeah, that'd be man. cool. Cares, but man. like, yeah. just a long way. I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, talk to me about that year, the year when it comes. Because, you know, I don't know. It might not be here. So I hear you, man. So You'll be of, here. Don't worry. I'll help you out. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so to kind of touch on like the the future of autonomy and to- autonomous vehicles, um, it kind of goes into like driverless cars and uh, connected cars, which is something that you've talked about, Rudy, in the past. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit more about the importance of identifying the difference between connected cars and driverless cars? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> kind of goes back a little bit to what I was saying before. There are driverless cars. You can literally go onto YouTube right now, type drive, drive, you know, self driving cars, and you can see a whole bunch of videos. Um, a connected autonomous vehicle is something that is both, um, um, like you got you got to think about like 5G being built out, fiber optics being everywhere, uh, um, traffic lights, traffic signals, bridges, um, roads, everything kind of being connected Mm -hmm. um uh technology wise uh so that all the cars can speak to each other each of the car like a driverless really a drive a driverless car right now is just a driverless car it's basically a car without a driver but a connected autonomous vehicle is a car that is through you know wireless technology and fiber optics it's everything is there's they're all speaking to each other and everything's moving along uh, you know, beautifully. That, yep. that, that's that's the difference. You have to have the infrastructure built out in order to get to that like driverless car utopia where yep. there's no more deaths, there's there's no more human drivers because we've built everything that needs to be built so all the cars can talk to not only to other cars but to the infrastructure around it, traffic signals, oh, roads, man. That's everything. What, that's so it's really essentially nice. turning life into a Disneyland ride. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, seriously. It's probably the best way to describe it. But now let me see. You see all the cars talking to each other? Yeah. That's going to be a mess. Because, you know, some of them female cars are going to get mad at the female cars. <laughs> I'm not talking to her. And they went crashes. So I'm just saying. I, I forgot about that. They need to keep that, that in there. Yeah. That yeah. Not all the cars are going to get along. All, you're right. We need to make sure our call, all, our call, 
all of the cars are asexuals, basically, what you said. <laughs> yes. Or g- gender neutral. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's right. Then, you know, we, and then you said hey, wireless. Now, are we going to have, uh, are we gonna have like, connection, you know, like, reception all the way through? Are we going to, like, hit a point, and then it's like, you know, like, you know. That can't happen. No signal? Right, yeah. no signal. Yeah. That's not you're stuck. If, if that ha- that's but that's the point. We can't let that happen. If that uh, happens, the machine, the, the car is going to stop, and a chaos is going to happen. Yep. That's why I argue we we need to really focus on the infrastructure first. We need to build all this out and answer all of these questions. Yep. Like female car is not talking to the other female car. We, I didn't even think about <laughs> that. Good like point. Jeff, yeah. Jeff's a genius. Like yeah. I totally didn't, Same. I totally forgot about that before we like start saying, oh, driverless cars are going to be here tomorrow and the world's going to change. No, it's not. No, not yet. It's a ways out. Yeah. And then you're going to have some of the male cars going to see some of the hot female cars and then they're going to come off track to try, hey, what's your name, baby? And then see, we got a problem. We got to think about this. True. We should all just go we watch the movie We got to make a one cars. gender so that, you know, and you know. It's a good point. Problems. You're a genius. No, I'm just. Well, that's why we if, brought him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a car, I'd want to be doing it. Um, to kind of take a step back for you, Jeff. Um, you know, we're gonna kind of get to a more lighthearted topic here. Mm, lighthearted. What's the most annoying thing a passenger could do? This is something I've always wondered as somebody. For me, who, sitting in my front seat. Really, I hate when drivers try to sit in my front seat. Oh, I, because you can definitely there. admit I'm guilty of that. Yeah. Well, why? Why? I'm sorry. I got to ask you, why would you want to sit in the front seat? I'm 6'4". If it's a subcompact car, I got to sit in the front so I have I'll leg room. The what? You can't forward. just put your, you can't spread your legs across the, you know, the thing? Yeah, I don't know. Just <laughs> Fred Eagle in the back? Uh, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. If that's you want to sit up front. I'm 6'2". I mean, yeah. I just, that's what I do. Why yeah. not? Hot chicks will get a pass, but, you know, for the most part, no, I don't want to. Because people sit up front. And then sometimes they want to talk, and uh, I don't want to. Sometimes I don't want to be bothered, man. So most of the times it's because you don't really want to connect or. I'm sorry, the grumpiest converse. comic you're gonna meet, okay? okay? And like I said, sometimes it don't bother me, but a lot of times it's like, and I and now I try to keep like a cool and stuff up there because a lot of times people get in, oh, in the seat, and then they get in the back, yeah, be like. Phew. But then, and that's why I don't like like uh, carpool rides because. You know, sometimes you get two, and then a, another one, a drive passenger, and like, ah, man. They come up front, and then they're just like it's almost like they're giving you like grading you, they're watching you, everything you do. <laughs> you know, so just sit in the back, man. Your AC Play levels. with your phone. You know, don't ask me any but questions. That's, that's the beauty of rideshare companies is that you can actually grade that guy too. You should be watching everything he's doing. I tell you what, if the fare is less than ten dollars, you're getting a one. Everybody. Ooh. If it's that's a short fair. ride, that's not fair. That's harsh, right, man. That's yeah, that is, you know what? That's People rough. do the same thing to those drivers. So it's like, it, 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 but then again, that's only me. That's only me. I don't know what the other drivers are doing. But you're, you if were, it's a short ride, mm, I don't want. You'll never be in my car again. You are ruining people's chances of getting future Uber and Lyft by giving them a one. No, with me. That's only with me. I, no, but that's not so how it works. They it aggregates. Also, send you back a like a poor rating as well after you, they I, you see know what? that you. I don't know because you, you don't see like like when you get up my car, they don't show us what you rate us. We don't see that. So what'll happen though is you'll get a text or email and said uh, we have a complaint from a passenger saying you didn't want them to sit up front and all that. And it's like what the hell, you know? So, but you don't. We don't see the grades. Okay. So here, here's here's one of my major issues with this. And and Jeff and I <laughs> talked about this on our on, on the podcast that I'm on, the Wisco oh. Weekly podcast. I'm the transportation correspondent, and we 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 got into it on this because I often <laughs> use I and and a lot of people that I know use Uber and Lyft as a first mile, last mile mm-hmm. solution. Definitely. There's a lot of people that live in the Pacific Palisades and take Uber and Lyft down to the end of the Expo Night. It's great rather than driving into downtown. I live in Manhattan Beach, and some, sometimes I'll use it to go to the end of the Green Line or, or to take me to another station. But Jeff, because, it's, because that's under $10, heck, it's under $5, is going to give it's me gonna a bad rating. It's going to be $2.80. And that's, and that's too bad. So if that's going to happen, then I hope that uber and lyft replaces you people with with robots with all the drivers you know you know i, I would rather deal with a, you know with what, a robot you know, i'm sorry but you know what would remedy that problem have a minimum ride of five dollars or something like that well they used to have that they used to have it but no now like did, i said they, i've yeah. had the 280 right? and people say i'm gonna tip you and they never tip yeah. okay so, so that's what i'm tipping. saying so if, if like i said five dollars okay that. fine i understand but I get a ride. I'm sitting here in the LXQ and it's surging, you know, 2.1, 1.9. And I'm about to get, then some, some guy at the hotel orders a ride and I got to go pick him up. 
and it's two dollars and eighty cents. I could have got a ride going to San Diego for one hundred and sixty bucks. You see what I'm saying? So it's it, 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 it kind of it's like if you want me to do all them rides, give it, make it a minimum. But I know if I do this, it's five dollars. Five dollars is five dollars. And they don't they don't tell you how far the ride's going to be before the passenger gets the car, mm. right? No, but the, the guys will screen it. Some of the guys will, mm, and hey, where you going? Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, but like, that happened last night. I had a lady, she was going to a most abuse LAX, and she go, oh, this is the guy canceled. We call me and he canceled. You know, I'm like, yeah, okay. But, you know, so, like I said, some people like short ride. So, it, it kind of evens out. Mm-hmm. They like 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 Uber and Lyft be having these like uh, like ride uh, incentives, you know, do like thirty five rides, you know, make like forty bucks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So people like doing a short ride, so it's not a big deal. And like in the five years I've been driving, four five years, I think I've had repeat customers maybe five. It's millions of people out there, so more than likely right. you're not gonna get. And so don't worry about my one rate. I'm worried. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I hope I never get into your car. You, be a you'll short get ride. a pass. But, but you know what? It might be a short <laughs> ride. But if it's surging, I'm like, okay, wow, that was a short ride. But, and that's a good thing when you want short rides. When it's surging, you want those short rides. So then you could do a lot more quicker and make more. Got so it's it. like, it's surging. All right, let me get short. But then you'll get that ride going to like uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> What do you what do you do in that case? Have you taken a cross cross state line trip before? Vegas. Vegas. We okay. had a Lyft driver got a uh LAX ride to Salt Lake City, Utah. That's Isn't that crazy? crazy. Eleven That's hours crazy. going nine coming. You can't get it no more. They they, they you know, they punch out like they'll you know, they'll block certain radiuses. So that ride you can't get in it, but it's only because it happened. <laughs> what was the reason? Why could, was missed, there no alternative? They missed the connecting flight. Okay. The next one, the Salt Lake from LAX, was not going to be there until like midday the next day. They had to be there in the morning. Had to be there. So got it. I, I, I think the future, perhaps. I mean, really. I mean, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure the rideshare companies are probably already working on this. But I think the future might be. Perhaps there's an Uber or Lyft driver, or perhaps there's somebody out there that needs to go to Vegas for a reason, or go to Salt Lake City, and maybe they'd maybe they'd rather do it by getting paid by taking somebody there. I, I, you know, connecting connecting those long distance drivers to 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 people that need to go long distances is I I think is probably the future. Yeah. I'm actually not. I'm actually surprised they're not doing that already because that's something that's been around forever. Like ten years ago, you could go on Craigslist and find some guy driving to you know San Francisco. Pay him twenty bucks to sit in the front seat with him. Yeah, no, I, I for sure somebody's got to be working, and if they're not, then you guys want to stop this podcast and start a new business. What yep. do you guys? What do you Ready guys think? I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, when you think are. about it, people always ask me about the longest <laughs> ride I've done and stuff. If you can look at Uber and Lyft log, there are rides from wherever you could think of, San Francisco, L.A., all that stuff. Okay, now some drivers don't like those kinds of rides. Now y'all just keep touching something that's important. That's that's good. For those kind of rides, they should have like a uh, like a opt in, if you don't mind doing like rides over like fifty miles, or whatever. A pool of those drivers, you know. And then if you get a ride like that, you know, it goes out to those guys first, because like I said, I know people that have been canceled. I, I took a guy to um, uh, Ventura. It was at night, you know. Uh, about 11.30 at night, and he called me. He said, hey, I'm going to Ventura. Is that okay? I said, yeah. I said, so when he got in the car, I said, um, why are you at He said, I just got to know because a lot of times the drivers will cancel. They don't want to go that far. And I'm like, you know, I'll do that quicker than I'll go, you know, around the corner to In-N-Out. You know, <laughs> you can just walk to In-N-Out. My, you know what? I'm going to tell you this. Is a, my buddy got a ride. He got a, a, a ride, ride request, Terminal 1 to Terminal 3. Oh. That's the dumbest stuff people be doing. <laughs> You, seriously, come on, yeah, that, three. That's a little ridiculous. It was, it was, it was in this purpose. This, I mean, I'm trying to be fair here. Did this person have like a disability? No, it was a regular girl, and she she tried to she tried to tell us she have a oh, lot I, of bags. No, yeah, good. Yeah. Qu- another good question. No, because all she had was a laptop. And I will tell you what, she tried to tell us. <laughs> well, we're gonna pick somebody up at Terminal Three. So when he pulled up, as he slowed down, she ran out. And he, he waited, 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 waited. And, you know, LAX is a cop. So you got to move, you got to move. So he, he took off. And then she called and she goes, oh, um, I forgot my laptop in your car. If that wow. was me, oh, she'd no. have to buy a new laptop. But yeah. he, my See buddy ya. took it back. But she was going from Terminal 1 to Terminal 3. It would have been quicker for her to just take a shuttle. 
or yeah, walk. hop on the flyaway or, 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 or walk. Or, yeah, usually it, it was a young years. person. It wasn't like an old person. Young person go terminal one, terminal three. Oh no, that's, that's what I'm awful, saying. Sometimes you get man. these stupid rides, and and those are the people less likely to tip. Two dollars exactly. and eighty cents. Okay, I will admit that's... I've taken a short ride under a mile. That's okay, but it was raining, so <laughs> again, it ain't everybody get and a it one. was uphill. Both ways, so I obviously. How, and you were how, how short? I mean, really, please, come on, let's let's uh, like point seven five miles. Did you tip the guy? No, because he yelled at me. Oh man, he yelled at me for <laughs> picking me up for such a short ride. That's cool. I was like, oh, does, does Jeff look? Does back. Jeff look really familiar to you right yeah. now? Is there like some recognition? Here? Actually, you know what? I thought <laughs> I thought there was something that's... between us. <laughs> Minimum ride of five dollars. That would knock out some of them problems, right? I'm telling you right now. Two thousand eighty cents, man. Come on, can I even buy a a, a value meal number one or something? I can't. Even yeah, that, no, McDonald's. That ride I used to work was... at. I did my first job was at McDonald's, and even in the in the nineties, you couldn't buy anything with two See, bucks and eighty cents. Man. cents you man. Couldn't. It was, it was two ninety nine was the minimum for the two bur- two cheeseburger <laughs> meal. I remember. I remember. <laughs> Trust me. I remember these things. So, as a, a veteran rideshare driver, how would you, or I guess, what are a couple of tips that you might give to future rideshare drivers or current rideshare drivers on how they can be successful? Um, the, the thing about being, like I said, now you got to, because more people are getting in, you got to be more strategic. Mm-hmm. You can't just turn on your app, drive, and make, like they say, $5,000 a month. No. You got to know, like, the best hours to drive. Mm-hmm. Areas, you know, certain areas. And then this is in your city, okay? So in your city, every place, there's hot spots, okay? Uh, I used, I, I live in the valley. When I first started, I would just turn on my app in my living room, wait till I get a ride, and I would stop. Look, then I would get passengers in the car and say, you know, I have a neighbor that drives for this. He would go out to the beach, and he would clean up. I'm like, well, something's wrong. So then I, I, I would start, turn on my app, get in my car, turn on my app, and then I would head towards the beach. But then, you know, you kind of get people, you know. I said, you know what? I would leave my app on, go all the way to the beach or whatever, turn on my app, and wow, it's just so because of that, it's like, okay, only turn on your app in certain areas where you know. Okay. Uh if I do a ride like I do LX, I'll do a ride and I'll drop them off, turn off my app, and drive back. People say, Well, you want to try to get a ride back? More than likely, you're gonna get somebody in that area. And it's gonna keep me in that area for a while. Because a lot of time what they'll do is if if you you have a ride and you're in the area, somebody need a ride, they'll just add it to your queue, and then it's like you drop you off, and then I gotta go pick him up, you know. So, you know, it take me four minutes to go pick you up, and then you're going just down the street five miles. That's nine minutes. I could have been close to LAX, get another ride, going to Vegas or something. So, pick good times, you know. Drive when it's surging, mm-hmm. you know. Rush hours, weekends, rush hours. Rush, when I rush hours, people gotta get somewhere. Yep. So you know, okay, rush hours, and I I do like studies. I'll look at my phone, like, you know, daily and say, okay, you know, every day, like, around 4.30 uh, to, like, a 7 in this area, it's surging. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to drive, let me go in that area and be ready, you know. Same thing, like, you know, I don't drive to club nights anymore, like, like 1.30 in the morning. You like people throwing up in your car? And- I've had that. Well, they didn't throw up. I've had to get people plastic bags and, you know, the, the ones you get at the hospital. Yeah. Uh, uh, that kind of thing. But I've been lucky, but no, I don't do that. Um. Hey Jeff, this sounds like a perfect opportunity for you to plug your YouTube channel that you talk oh. about these tips. Oh yeah, that's right. I, t- thanks, Rudy. Yeah, of course, Rudy, 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 there you go. Rudy, 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 Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> I have these very same tips on my YouTube channel. It's called Comedian Jeff Hodge. I got about nineteen tips on how to make five thousand dollars a month uh, with uh, Uber and Lyft. Got okay, it. and you can go on there and you can just watch the little survey. And this is stuff I learned over mm-hmm. the four or five years doing it. And, it'll, it'll, you know, just like people are, people ask me, which one should I drive for, Lyft or Uber? Download both, both apps. Drive for both. That's something, actually, I was wondering. I mean, it's something that you hear all the time of drive for both. You'll earn more money. Double the earnings. Double your, your earning potential. Is that, is that a fact? Is that true? Do you see that when you're driving? Okay. Uber is, the difference between Lyft and Uber is far as Uber is like Starbucks. Lyft is like coffee bean inside. So Uber is more busier. Okay, so if you just want to do rides, go with Uber. But again, but now sometimes Uber surges more, a lot more too. It's mm-hmm. just surge. Okay, uh, it used to be in the past when I first started, Uber was just they didn't really care about the driver. Lyft was always more about the driver, the listen, whatever. Yep. So 
you know, you got a better experience with Uber. I mean, with Lyft. You want to, if anything, like, let me go with these guys because they treat you better. Uber's like, they were basically the attitude was just, just do the right, just do the right. We don't care what, you know, you're sending complaints, you want to hear any feedback, whatever. Um, drive for both. Um, you're probably going to make more money with Uber because just because they got more passengers. Got it. You know, so you just, you'll always get it. Whereas it may take you, if it takes me five, Minutes to get an Uber ride. Lyft in, in certain areas. Uber, I got LAX. Uber, if it takes me 10 minutes, Lyft might take uh, 20, 25 to got get it. a ride. Okay. okay. I got a question for you, Jeff. So yeah. if you do have both of the apps and you, like, you get a ride on, on Lyft, does, does, <clears throat> does Uber know that you're like, that Lyft is going or do you actually have to turn off the app? How does that work, like, like process wise? I'm curious. Well, if you kept both apps on, this is what we do turn on both apps and then. Uh, whomever the ride comes in first, that's the one I'll take. But now sometimes they may come in together. Right. And I might look, okay, where are they going? And they'll tell you, like, sometimes they'll just show you, like, uh, like you know, this this is going, like, 27 uh, miles. Lyft does this a lot now, seven miles. And it's like, well, this is in, this one is surging, so let me go with this ride. So, you know, if you don't know, you're just like, well, you know, um, I'll go with this one. So you just make a choice. But yeah. what you could do is just, and then once I get that ride, I'll turn off the other one's app. App until after I'm finished the other ride because what will happen as you're driving you keep getting rides keep getting rides keep getting rides right and then if you start getting a bunch of not accepting rides they're gonna send you a message hey you're not accepting rides if you're not driving turn it off and you 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 don't do anything with any of like the Uber Eats or any of the food delivery places no, right um, because a lot of times that's more like you got you got to set up times to drive yeah that, so and, my so I I got familiar with with higher car first I mean. Brian Allen went on to my the Wisco Weekly podcast, mm-hmm. and then I got to know Brian, and he told me about what you guys provide. Lo and behold, I had a cousin move in with me, and he had driven for Uber um, three years ago when he lived here, and he owned his own car. But he came and he stayed with me. He was you know he was going to start a restaurant business. He's like, I need to get a car. Like I need to figure out a way to like rent a car and like get going on on working so I can put some money together to start my restaurant. I introduced him to hire car and you guys you know, immediately he within the, like a couple of days he's working Perfect. and he's been delivering and he's, he's been loving it. He's not doing Uber or Lyft, but he's doing the food delivery, but you're absolutely right. It's scheduled times on those. Do you get, do you guys work with those companies at all? Do you think that that's, that's how they're just going to continue to do it where you actually have to schedule your time? Cause that seems like really inflexible. Do you know like specifically which companies he's working for? Because I know a couple of those like Postmates, or DoorDash. DoorDash. Um, definitely DoorDash. Okay. He so, definitely does that one. I think he might do Postmates too. Okay. I know. That, I mean, it might also be location based where they uh, ask you to set your own schedule or to, they, they kind of, I guess, set a schedule for you. Yes. They, that's, that's correct. Well, yeah. So, that's right. Because yeah. I know that there are, um, they do advertise in most locations that you can, you're, be your own boss, set your own yeah, schedule, you, work you, on yeah, your own watch. You pick on your, your hours. Watch, you know? Sometimes you get like the hours you want to work. Like, I'll work from, this hours and then the thing too again with that it's same thing location like mm-hmm. you know certain places might be busier in the morning some breakfast so if right. you're gonna do breakfast and then lunch and dinner and stuff like that, and then certain areas so if you're gonna do that and you want to kind of just get more bang for your money you got to figure out that little trick too as opposed to just doing every because what other thing i hear about with the delivery drivers stuff is apartments in LA, it's a lot of time getting in or even getting into the building. It's a problem. It takes mm-hmm. time. And then some of these big complexes that say people, they don't even meet you at the door. They, you know, you got to come all the way up. And, and then the parking sucks. Yeah. Totally. So you can't find the parking. Oh, parking's and, a and then some there. of these parking, you know, these, you know, LA parking guys, you kind of like, okay, I'm going in there. You, you double park, you run up there. It takes a while. You come down, you get a ticket. So those are the little <laughs> things people complain about when they do the door dash and stuff. It's like people, you know, it sometimes it's not worth it because I, some guy ordered a little five ninety nine meal at McDonald's, and I want him getting a seventy dollar ticket t- parking ticket because you don't want to bring his butt down to open the gate or meet me somewhere. So, I, yeah, I do got, the payouts work similar? I, I, I while we're sitting here, I'm thinking about another infrastructure fix. In, in all future development, just because of the way our economy is going and all the delivery and with Amazon and every, everything happening and even ride shares picking you up, they need to have a dedicated par- uh, parking space for delivery, yeah, for, for, yeah. for these delivery things out on every single city. I mean, because I can only imagine how painful that parking is, man. I mean, that's got to be horrible. Yeah. Look, 
it, what's even worse? I'm I'm one morning I did a ride in West LA with with, with, with Hollywood, and it was like you know like seven thirty eight o'clock in the morning. So and I hate this. I pull up the street and I'm there waiting. You know, you push the thing. I you what I do before before I show up, I'll hit like I'm here. And then when I'm around the corner, so they can get the butt down sick. A lot of times they'll say they're coming down when they say that's another five, ten minutes. So I'm there waiting in my car, you know, cars running. Here comes parking enforcement. Oh. He's like, um, you can't park there. I said, well, I'm not parked. I'm waiting for so I mean, he knows what it is. You, you know, when you see cars waiting, yeah. you follow, and you see the sticker see, Uber yeah, Lyft. Exactly. He's like, well, you don't have your flashers on. I'm like, <laughs> so he Here goes, go. I'm going to go down to the end of the street, and if you I come back up, you're still there, I'm gonna give you a ticket. Now he has the one with the cameras, and those ones that have those cameras will pick up a lot more information. So it ain't like you could just drive off. Okay. But I'm like, see, that's what I'm talking about. That he knows what I'm doing. I'm here trying to pick up a passenger that's inconsiderate all of this ride. I know the street is busy. You can't find no parking. It's like, come on, man. If you know your street don't have parking and there's nowhere for the guy to pull off, when you order the ride, be your ready so that when he pulls up, jump in and you go. Yeah. Otherwise, I got a circle. I got a circle, and then this ride is not surging. Uh, there might be a two dollar eighty cents ride. Cancel. See, I'm here, not doing it. See, here's here's the issue. I mean, there's a lot of them. We, we're we're we've grown up. I mean, not necessarily in Los Angeles, but just nationally, especially like in New York. We've we've grown up with just taxis, right? You call you call a taxi, and it, you are paying that taxi, and uh, you know for that brief period of time, it's a license. You know, I I have this ride. Uber and Lyft is ride sharing. You, 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 there needs to be some consideration for the drivers, right? You're not, you're not a taxi. This is different. This is somebody's car. This is somebody's time. And so there needs to be like a mental shift that I think needs to happen so people will become more considerate. Or, you know, we're, then again, on the other hand, we're all human beings and we're all just a bunch of jerks in any, in any event. And it's probably never going to happen. But yeah, that's where the whole ride sharing versus taxi thing needs to be broken down, in my opinion. Well, if Uber and Lyft, I mean, Lyft, Uber start, they've, they've kind of made a little adjustment. I know Uber, would, we can't start the ride until you get in the car. Now, I know what Uber will say, you get paid for waiting. Okay, so they've made some shit from before when I started, when they never used to pay you. And now that what they need to start doing is, again, letting the people know, and I just, I don't know how much it is they're paying, but, you know, make it a little bit more cost costly for them, then more people will be, you know, willing to be out there ready if they know they're going to have to pay $5 minimum or $10, you know, because like I said, sometimes we're taking our safety in, 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 in our own hands when we have to pull up at some of these places and there ain't no place to, you know, you go to Hollywood, man, there ain't a lot in the streets that there's nowhere to pull over. And then some of these people don't want to walk from like here to that door. Can you pick me up curbside? That's over here. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to have to go down there and do this. That's going to take me another 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's terrible that you, that you don't get paid until until you pick them up. That's that's ridiculous. And that's yeah, they act like unfair. you're the personal driver. Yeah, that's. Exactly I'll be right that. down. I yeah. waited a guy one time, fifteen minutes. That's that's when I first started. I I didn't know that you know, but I would as I showed up, I would hit uh, uh you know start right and uh, fifty. He was right there, La Brea and um, Wilshire. Them big five thousand dollars apartments right there. Nobody can afford. And I'm there waiting, waiting, because I'm, you know, I didn't even know how to get it. I had to go down and all this stuff. So I'm waiting, waiting. I'm like, man, maybe I should go. He came down, man, one of the young 20s on, got in the car, gave me to Glendale. Okay. But 15 minutes, dude. That's now it. I'm just like. It's unacceptable. Two or three minutes and I'm canceling. Screw tell that. me he got a one star. Please, please tell no, me. No, he, he was going to Glendale and he was on the clock. See. It was over $10. <laughs> it was over yeah, $10. Yeah. I was 15 minutes <laughs> waiting and then went to stars. Glendale. So I'm like, okay, yeah, he, he, he can do this again. Yeah, I'm going to give him five stars, come back in the car. Yeah. yeah. Your, your your rating system is ridiculous. <laughs> no, it ain't. It's completely unfair. I don't like it. But <laughs> no, it ain't. All right. I'm Rule of thumb. That's my opinion. I'm just don't here, get in his car. I'm here yeah. to make I'm money, not, not friends. Don't sit up front unless you're a hot chick. Then sit up front. Yeah. If, if you're married, sit in the back. I don't want to talk to no. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. You need some incentive, man. Because sometimes you just sit up there going, man, I hope the win I win the laundry soon. Man. I can't be doing this with these people. They, you know, because they get in there, sometimes they have attitudes. You know what you can get with $2.80? You can what? get you, you can get a lotto ticket. You can get, you can get two super lotto, lotto tickets. Lotto, a super lotto every Wednesday and Saturday. You can get you can get two. I'm just throwing that out there. People in the big cities do not win. You got to be living in some hick town it's with a, some foreign name, and then you win. But you, if you're in L.A., you're not going to win. If you're in Houston, you're not going to win. You got to be in a little, a little <laughs> shitty-ass town. <laughs>
Oh, uh, Rudy. As somebody who's vocally oppresses their or vocally pronounces their distaste for cars uh, in general, where do you see the the future of mobility or uh, the near future of mobility? Yeah, I have vo- I vocally express myself against commuting. Okay, uh, I, I I don't commute via my own vehicle mostly right i mostly take public transportation and that's because when i was growing up my grandmother immigrated to this country she didn't speak english she didn't have a driver's license she never got a driver's license she actually learned how to use the bus system and she taught me how to use a bus system so we used to walk everywhere and take the bus and it was great it was it was freedom it was freedom for my grandmother it was freedom for me i used to take the bus to my 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 school over in Anaheim, even though I lived two cities over, it was fantastic. How, in Orange County, how long does that take? It take you like an hour? It, it, it you know, yeah. I mean, you know, that, <laughs> it's I mean, the experience. It, it does take a while, but back and back then, I didn't have a phone and I wasn't being productive. You know, back right. then, I suppose I was reading all those thousands of books that I used to read because I used to be a big nerd. I mean, I'm totally cool now. But <laughs> but, but what kind of book? A lot of Stephen King. Oh. I'm really into Stephen King. Um. Now, one of the reasons why I use public transportation is because with smartphones, you can get so much done. The reason, Mm -hmm. you know, you called me a renaissance man earlier. You want to know when that happened? Is when I gave up driving every single day. I've always wanted to be a writer. I've always wanted to create my own stories. I wanted to screenwriting. I wanted to learn how to do some stand-up comedy. I wanted to be a better speaker. Once I... um, you know, delegated driving to, you know, somebody else, i.e. the train or the commuter express, I have two hours back a day for me to either work or work on personal hobbies, things that make me feel, you know, like, uh, like proud and, and for, for a number of reasons, because I'm not driving and I'm not polluting and, and, and I'm saving money. I mean, it's ridic- five bucks to get from the South Bay to downtown L.A., Versus fifty bucks with the with the toll and the gas and the parking, so I'm saving money. I'm helping out with the environment and I'm being productive. My favorite vacation road trips. I love road <laughs> trips. I love getting in the car, especially in the state of California, and checking out all the awesome, amazing places that we have here, as well as Nevada. So I don't hate cars. What I hate is using a car when you don't have to, when you could be more productive and you could save some money. I think. Everybody is starting to agree with me. I mean, I've, I've had this uh, t- 12 years ago. I gave up my car for a year. This was before U- this was before Uber Lyft. This was before the scooters. This was before everything. I used the, the green line and I, I occasionally I'd rent a car. It, w- it was hell. But right now we're moving in the right direction. You can live. You can actually live in L.A. without a car and and use all of these options that we have today. I think, that's sucks, what, though. I think that's the future as well. I do. I, I believe mm-hmm. it 100 percent. Yeah. I mean. For me, I, we grew up in the same area, um, fully dependent on a car. Um, I think one of the one of the things you mentioned, I, I believe it was in an article, is that um, in order for people to change how they think about driving and getting around, they have to change their mindset. Absolutely. Because um, we're essentially bought into this form of transportation that somebody told us we have to you, you you hit the nail on the head. We grew up in Orange County. What options did we really have? I no, mean, I. You had no option, right? I re- I remember getting in trouble in high school. My parents took my car away. Yeah. They're like, "You got to take the bus to work." I looked at the bus schedule. It was going to take me two and a half hours mm-hmm. to go three miles. Yeah, no, you, that's right. You see, it, it's all about mindset shifts, but it's all about as well having alternatives. Mm-hmm. Now, and the alternatives are here today. Still not really there in Orange County. You're not seeing no. a lot of the micro mobility companies. You still have cars and you still have buses, but at least you have Uber and Lyft to get around. Mm-hmm. It's starting to happen in the big time suburbs. Right. Here in LA, I'm telling you, you, you can live without a car right. easily. It's well, a lot the, easier. The point I'm, I'm getting to is when I moved from Orange County to LA, I stopped using my car. It's awesome. I tried to, I actually, I was running late today, so I was going to try and drive into work. My car battery was actually dead. I haven't driven it in so long. <laughs> oh, really? seriously? Yeah, that's 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 great. That's so, awesome. Uh, I had to take a I had to take a lift here. That's oh, great. In the morning, was it more than two dollars and eighty cents? <laughs> <laughs> it was under ten, so I probably got a one star. Nah, he, he's good. And while you were in the Uber and Lyft, 
you were either A, relaxing, or B, probably doing some work on your phone, if, yep. I, if I may guess. So you were being yeah, productive. Yeah, prepping for this. Yeah. So it, he was on Tinder. That's what he was doing. <laughs> so there, oh, there gosh, are, I'm getting married. Don't tell my wife that. No, I'm just joking. He's getting, no, he was there, there's <laughs> The so driver many, was. There's so many, you know, people talk about the negative things about smartphones. You know, you're always working, you're always on them, and, you know, they're, they're like an appendage. But if you can, if you change your mind and you start, you know, commuting in different ways, you know, if you, I, I call it smart multitasking, like let delegate things that you really shouldn't do. While, and at the same time, you could be doing being more productive Then you can have more time back. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how much real estate you have. You're never going to be able to create time. The only way that you, mm-hmm. the only thing that you can do is shift your mind and readjust things so you can actually have more time to do things that you like to do. Don't drive. You, I'm sorry. Don't commute. You don't need to period. No more commuting. So how can, how can we make, how can government officials or local officials make public transportation a little bit more like attractive? You don't really see any social media influencers trying to beautify taking the bus or maybe the Metro. And, you know, are there any campaigns that you've heard of recently or something that you have in mind that we can make it, you know, a more attractive way of getting from point A to point B? I was just on a podcast where this exact question came up. It was um, good as in the details as a friend of mine, Gwen Dolsky, she's launched this new podcast. And she, we, this was a big subject that, that we talked about, about how the fact that there isn't a lot of marketing mm. in, in, in public transit. There is. The problem is the marketing is going to the wrong people. It's going mm. to people that are already using the system. And a lot of the, the local government officials are going to conferences and going to speak at places where people are focusing on the changing of mobility. What I do, what I personally, one of the reasons why I joined the Wisco Weekly podcast, which used to be purely automotive and purely car, pure focus on car dealerships, mm-hmm. I went on there to start changing people's minds about, hey, man, maybe you shouldn't buy a car. Hey, man, maybe you should be thinking about a, you know, not commuting with a car. Maybe you should be thinking about this. Maybe you should be thinking about that. And that's how that podcast is you know, evolved to automotive and advanced transportation. So mm-hmm. while I'm definitely not a social media influencer, I need a lot more follows. Me I'm, too. I'm trying Follow to follow me. Well, that's why, that's why I've, I've teamed up with Jeff. Here. Why don't I'm, you throw out your Instagram handle right now at Jeff Hodge comedian. That's, oh. that's your Instagram. I'm, I'm Sallow Rudy at Sallow Rudy on Twitter. Yeah. And I tweet a lot about this type of stuff and I post pictures. I, I'm trying. I mean, literally, I will go on to any podcast. I will talk on any panel. I will talk at anything to just to, to put that marketing out there. And I'm not getting paid for this. I want to get paid. He <laughs> wants to get paid. I, I feel like it's my duty because I work with local governments and because it's changed my life in such a positive way. Like mm-hmm. the fact that I'm able to do all of these amazing other things and keep my day job uh, is amazing. And yeah. It, you can too if you just stop driving. Stop driving. Stop driving. Stop driving. So you just, you just mentioned um, – something that's really interesting and that higher car is actually getting really into right now is well um, you you guys can pay me i mean that's that's totally yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I, I love now we're talking now we're talking just kidding. um <laughs> so so higher car is making a big shift into the dealer space um and for you what are your opinions on dealers moving away from the idea of we got to sell this car to oh maybe we can actually repurpose this car for another use I, I think it's the future. I, I do think that one, one, of the, um, one of the groups, if you will, that, that, that seems to kind of be pushing back on some of the, the transportation revolution that's happening here, and whether that be scooters, whether that be autonomous vehicles, whether that be the other changes that are, that are going on, are the dealers because they're worried. I mean, mm-hmm. they've got to protect their turf. They've got to protect their what they've built up o- over the years. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, that's their business. That's their family's business. That's their, they got mouths to feed. So I think the future, we need to bring the dealers into the conversation. Another, re- another reason why I joined the Wisco Weekly podcast is because of the dealers, because I do want them to be a part of the, the conversation. Because when I go to these other conferences and I talk to these advanced transportation people, people are like, oh, cars are dead and we're going to take the auto dealers out of, out of business and we're going we're gonna to kill them all. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Auto dealers provide a lot of sales tax revenues to local governments, oh, okay? Nice. So they are good citizens. They, they help generate a lot of revenue. We're, we, we, sh- we should not be killing the dealer. We need to bring them as a part of the conversation. What you guys are doing at Hire Car, I love it because you guys are helping to bridge that gap. 
Exactly. That's why I'm here supporting it and will continue to support you guys and talk you guys up any which way I can on any forum because we need to bring the dealers into the conversation. They need to have some skin in the game. This way they won't battle back. They'll be a part of it and then and then that'll help the transportation revolution happen in a, in a, in an orderly fashion. Get you a higher car. You can use it to spy on your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's see. I mean, is there anything else you guys have to say about transportation and where it's going? Um, I think the, the, another thing that I'm seeing in transportation is happening right here, right now. The convergence of transportation and entertainment. You have a world-known comedian on a podcast right here. We're creating entertainment, right? Podcasts are entertainment. And you have a, you know, not well-known uh, comedian probably will never become well known. Transportation but Renaissance man. A transportation junkie. That's that's what I like to call myself. Here we're talking. This is entertainment. So I do see that the future of transportation working with entertainment. There's going to be while you have more people, more companies like Uber and Lyft um, making things easier for passengers. I think you're going to see more entertainment in cars. That's whether right. whether that's going to be stuff on the screens or VR or more mm -hmm. interactive type stuff. There was this one podcast that we did. Dennis and I did on the Whisk Weekly with this company called the Connected Car or something where they have apps and and they're bringing entertainment into the vehicle. Okay, that's what I see. Uh, I'm super excited about because I love entertainment. It's one of the reasons why I write. It's one of the reasons why I do stand up comedy. It's one of the reasons why I speak and I do screenwriting. I love entertainment, but I love transportation, and so it's it's happening, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. That that's that's what I think's going on. What what about you? I don't know how you're going to break dance in a car while it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> like a flatbed. You know yeah. what? It's going to be Uber, Uber flatbed. Oh, yeah, flatbed. Like a, a little dance floor in the back. I mean, going to be doing some windmills and some kicks. It'll be cool. I, I think that's <laughs> a good start thing. Start driving entertainment, a U-Haul. Entertainment in the car. Just put it all together because uh, I think the more fun you make it for the uh, passengers uh, or people that you want to get out of the car, the more likely there are they say, well, hey, I can take this and do this and I can have fun. It's experience. You know, I think that's a good thing, a good way to move. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's definitely a big selling point, especially on the public transportation side. Um, you know, I think the, the stigma or idea behind, you know, like taking the metro, taking the bus, taking the subway is that one, it's boring, kind of dirty. But I think as we, as you just mentioned, make this push towards incorporating entertainment into the transportation experience, I think that's really going to open people's eyes to actually wanting to take these forms of public transportation. I also think not just entertain, I mean, as a part of entertainment, a subset of it, podcasts, right? A lot of people like to drive and listen to podcasts, but you can also listen to a podcast while you're you know, on a subway or when you're on a bus. So hopefully you'll be listening to this not necessarily just in a car, right? Because I'm a big public transportation proponent. But podcasts are now becoming extremely educational. Like if you want to learn about something, you want to learn about an industry, you want to learn about history, you want to learn about podcasts. some cra some crazy stuff. Podcasts, I think, are going to be a huge part of the future of education. So I also see that kind of you know convergence as well, education and transportation. It is a great time to work in the transportation space. It is extremely exciting i've always been really passionate about it and i i'm i mean i'm i'm all about it so i love that you guys are have created your own podcast i, I love what you guys are doing i'm you know jeff everything that he does i i think it's great i think we have a really bright future ahead of us i awesome. think if they want more people to get more guys to ride the bus they should have strippers on there that's what i think <laughs> That's, Party a, that's a crazy thought. That's that's the that's a crazy crazy thought. I am against that. <laughs> I am against that. Uh, awesome. Anyways, thanks for joining us, guys. It's been a real pleasure. And join us next week for another episode of Mobility Revolution, powered by Hire Car. Hire Car. Thanks, guys. Rudy. 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 <laughs>